How brain-computer interfaces are turning thoughts to text. Next-generation BCIs are helping people who can't speak to communicate more easily. There are a number of labs making breakthroughs in turning language into text or spoken word. These projects are gathering data straight from the source using electrodes directly in contact with the brain surface. The system uses sensors contained in a polymer sheet which, when laid onto the surface of the brain, can pick up the user's neural signals. That information is then decoded by machine learning systems to create the words the user wants to say. The first user of the system was an individual who had a stroke in his brainstem, which left him with extremely limited head, neck, and limb movements and an inability to speak. Typically, signals are carried from the brain to the speech muscles through nerves. Think of nerves as the electrical wires of the brain. In the case of the trial participant, the wiring had been effectively cut between the brain and the vocal muscles. When he tried to speak, the signals were formed but couldn't reach their destination. The BCI picks up those signals directly from the speech cortex of the brain, analyzes them to find out which of the muscles relate to the speech the participant was trying to move, and uses that to work out the words he wanted to say, converting those would-be muscle movements into electronic speech. The trial participant can say any of 50 words that the system would be able to recognize. The words were chosen by the UCSF researchers because they were either common, related to caregiving, or simply words that the participant wanted to be able to say, such as family, good, or water. Signals were sampled from the 128-channel array on his brain and interpreted by an artificial neural network, which uses nonlinear models that can learn complex patterns in brain activity and relate them to the intended speech. The system was able to decode the participant's intended speech at a rate of up to 18 words per minute with up to 93% accuracy. BlackRock Neurotech is also working on language applications for brain-computer interfaces. Instead of using signals sent to the speech muscles, the company has created a system based on imagined handwriting. You mentally picture writing an A, and the system converts it to written text using an algorithm developed by Stanford University. It currently works at around 90 characters per minute, and the company hopes it could eventually take it up to 200, which is around the same speed as the average person writes by hand. The system is perhaps one of the closest to commercialization, and is likely to be used by people with a condition such as ALS, a terminal disease which is known as Lou Gehrig's disease, or motor neuron disease. BlackRock's Neurotech system currently runs at a 94% accuracy, rising to a 99% accuracy once autocorrection is applied. Though they're at a relatively early stage of development, the potential for language brain-computer interfaces to improve the quality of life of patients with conditions that render them currently unable to speak is clear. Robot dogs join the New York Fire Department. Inside a dimly lit tunnel along a stretch of simulated subway track, one of the New York Fire Department's new dogs showed off a few of its tricks. The most remarkable things that the two robotic dogs can do were mastered by real dogs long ago, jogging across rugged terrain, hopping over small obstacles, and helping keep their masters out of harm's way. The department, which plans to deploy the robots in the months ahead, is the first fire agency in the country to purchase the 70-pound machines, which cost $75,000 each and are built and sold by Boston Dynamics, a robotics company in the United States. The department plans to use the robot dogs to aid in some of its most precarious search and rescue missions. At the command of the human operator, the device can provide vital information in the midst of a calamitous event. It has the ability to descend deep underground after a steam leak to collect images and data about dangerous debris. It can also be deployed moments after a building collapse to gauge structural integrity or measure the concentration of toxic, flammable gases like carbon monoxide to better inform firefighters responding to the scene. A fire department spokesman said that the robots would only collect data on hazardous material situations and added that the department compliance officers had been trained on confidentiality rules. No-code approach allows anyone to create AI solutions. A growing number of new products allow anyone to apply artificial intelligence without having to write a line of computer code. Proponents believe the no-code movement will change the world. A new product called Lobe.ai allows anybody to train a computer vision system to recognize objects by simply dragging and dropping sample photos and clicking a few buttons to make the system. Just as clickable icons have replaced obscure programming commands on home computers, new no-code platforms replace programming languages with simple and familiar web interfaces. Juji, for example, is a tool designed to make building AI chatbots easy. It uses machine learning to automatically handle complex conversation flows and infer users' particular characteristics to personalize each engagement. Using Juji, staff members at the University of Illinois were able to create and manage their own custom AI chatbot and scale their students' recruitment operations. Also, OpenAI, the company co-founded by Elon Musk, has a vast AI system, GPT-3, that can write code when prompted with simple English. It can even create websites and do other basic programming tasks. DeepMind, a subsidiary of Alphabet, Google's parent company, 
has gone a step further with an AI tool capable of writing complete code to solve complex problems posed to it with normal speech or text. Users of Microsoft's Power Platform can generate simple applications by just describing them. Microsoft's corporate vice president of business apps and platforms estimates that half of all office work could be automated with AI if there were enough developers to do the work. Eventually, the broader public will be able to create AI-enabled software in much the same way that teenagers today can create sophisticated video effects that would have required a professional studio a decade or two ago. Google's AppSheet is an open platform where people can connect data and, with a single click, create apps that can be opened on a smartphone, tablet, or computer. It uses AI to understand the intent of users and enables them to build mobile and desktop applications with integrated computer vision and predictive analytics features. Robotics startup Nextem launches wearable BCI headset, which can be used by mental health professionals to directly access patients' EEG data. Nextem, a robotics startup based in Palo Alto, California with an R&D team in India, is set to roll out across Asia-Pacific, Europe, and the United States with its headset that can be controlled by a user's thoughts. Nextem offers mind-controlled brain-computer interface solutions for researchers and developers. The non-invasive Nextem headset has 15 pin-dry EEG electrodes and 16-channel EEG sensors that capture and deliver accurate EEG signals. It has 6 hours of battery life and is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled. When used with the Nextem Wisdom Software Development Kit, users can conduct real-time analysis of captured EEG signals and build interfaces to gain insight from data. The no-code Wisdom SDK, meanwhile, enables developers to build complex machine learning algorithms used in real time and is able to make fast computations and calculations of EEG data using GPUs in its algorithms. Claiming that they are not limited to a niche market, Nextem is exploring the use cases of BCIs in virtual reality, mental health, and everyday applications. Specifically for mental health, BCI devices will provide practitioners with convenient and low-cost access to EEG data. A handheld surgical robot can help stem fatal blood loss. After a traumatic accident, there's a small window of time when medical professionals can apply life-saving treatment to victims with severe internal bleeding. Delivering this type of care is complex, and key interventions require inserting a needle and a catheter into a central blood vessel, through which fluids, medications, and other aids can be given. First responders, such as ambulance emergency medical technicians, are not trained to perform this procedure, so treatment can only be given after the victim is transported to a hospital. In some instances, by the time the victim arrives to receive the care, it may already be too late. A team of researchers at MIT Lincoln Laboratory, together with physicians from Massachusetts General Hospital, have developed a solution to this problem. The Artificial Intelligence Guided Ultrasound Intervention Device, or AI Guide, is a handheld platform technology that has the potential to help personnel with simple training to quickly install a catheter into a common femoral vessel, enabling rapid treatment at the point of injury. AI Guide is a platform device made with custom-built algorithms and integrated robotics that could pair with most commercial portable ultrasound devices. A simple targeting display guides the user to the correct location and then instructs them to pull a trigger, which precisely inserts the needle into the vessel. The device verifies that the needle has penetrated the blood vessel and then prompts the user to advance an integrated guide wire into a vessel. The user then manually advances a catheter. Once the catheter is securely in the blood vessel, the device withdraws the needle and the user can remove the device. With the catheter safely inside the vessel, responders can then deliver fluid, medicine, and other interventions. Users with medical experience ranging from 0 to greater than 15 years tested AI Guide on an artificial model of human tissue and blood vessels, and one expert user tested it on a series of live sedated pigs. The team reported that after only two minutes of verbal training, all users of the device on the artificial human tissue were successful in placing the needle. The needle insertion speed and accuracy were comparable to that of experienced clinicians operating in hospital environments on human patients.